Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're talking about single tenant net lease investment properties today. We have Scott Lindstrom with us with Gerard. We have Nancy Miller with us from Bull Realty. And one of the things that I'm wondering about, you guys are in this sector, in the space every day. Are you hearing anything from tenants about the new FASB lease accounting changes coming up where they're going to have to put these leases, uh, these operating leases on their financial statements uh, and they haven't had to do that before. Are they saying anything? Are you hearing anything about maybe wanting to do more self-development or wanting shorter lease terms or adjusting their anything? Do you hear anything, Nancy? Um, Michael, yeah. I surprisingly haven't heard word one from either the, the tenant side mm -hmm. or the buyer investor side. They, I don't know. They go, what's, what's FASB? Yeah. <laughs> Michael, it's the same on my, my end. We have not heard one word uh, from a tenant, uh, even when negotiating our leases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I find that very interesting. Uh, I think it's the, the single tenant net lease uh, market is the, is the sector that I think will be most impacted uh, as some of these tenants may uh, want you know, think about shorter lease terms if it's if the economies are there to do it, right? Uh, you know, as a developer, if, if they decide to go from a long term, a 15 year or 20 year lease to, to a 10, that's, you know, that's really more risk uh, on our end, which, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to look for a higher return on cost, which is a higher rent, which I, I don't see a retailer particularly caring for. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this may ultimately lend itself to, to retailers doing more self development and less leases can be fabricated in such a way to address these these new rules mm -hmm. yeah and the, the rules I I've done a little uh, research and reading on the FASB proposed this that and the other and it's as if I need to it's Greek to me <laughs> it's it, it is so complex that I just can't imagine you know law departments of uh, tenants and outside of counsel are going to make a lot of money trying to decipher what the bottom line yeah. is. It's very complex. Yeah, well, it is interesting. And, uh, you know, our tenant reps here at uh, Bull have gotten into it pretty heavily. And I think it's going to be a, a big impact for these tenants and the way they want to structure their leases, the way they want to structure their operating expenses, the way they want to structure their renewal options. So I think it's going to be big and uh, it'd be interesting to see if it. One of the things I haven't heard anyone say that, that I'd be interesting to see as well is if there is a couple of years down the road an inclination of these tenants to maybe do to own more of their own facilities than lease because of this or to have shorter leases, might it put even more strain on the supply in the single tenant net lease sector? Might There might be even less supply and even cap rate compression that like we haven't seen before because you know if you can't find a 20 year or 15 year lease or if it's hard to find you know two years from now obviously because of supply and demand the value is going to go up. Well, uh, the other thing that I want to ask you guys about is 1031 exchanges. You know, Congress was looking to raise the income, raise money for the for the government, right? And they're talking about the 1031 exchange. How many of the transactions you guys are involved in are 1031 exchanges, Scott? Quite a few. Yeah. Um, the typical sales that, that we have are, I would say, 85 percent to 90 are 10, 10, wow. 1031 buyers right now. It's, it's a significant uh, amount, would have a significant impact mm -hmm. uh, on the overall mm -hmm. 10, 10, I mean, triple net industry. Right, so. mm -hmm. right, and, and it's amazing because, you know, if the, if Congress abolishes it, you got a lot of a lot of money that's going to stop flowing, right? Because every one of these transactions has surveyors, has property condition assessments, has lawyers, has brokers, has developers, has construction people. I mean, it could be a huge impact on the economy if they kill it. Mm -hmm. it, it could, um, you know, just as you mentioned, the number of business transactions that are outside the actual sales transaction. You know, that that income. That, that gets eliminated that, that was taxable mm -hmm. just disappears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, you want, might not be able to pamper your dogs as much if uh, <laughs> they do the 1031. Mm -hmm. How many of your deals are 1031? I, I would say that probably 75% are, uh, and they're big 1031s. They're people who are selling a, a family asset, a big thing, uh, rather than just a small transaction where we're having to place multiple properties. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we just finished one of those, and we have another one where we're, and I'm, I'm glad for the business, and I'm also worried that I'm going to have to really scurry to find quality things 
for these guys within that limited 1031 time frame. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's good uh, for business, but it is challenging and um, it, it will be interesting to see how FASPI and a lot of these things uh, impact this, but I don't yeah. think the feds will get rid of 1031s. Well, let's hope not. And if you'd like more information on 1031 exchanges, uh, reverse exchanges, construction exchanges, and the sort, we'll have some links uh, at the show website. Uh, just visit CREshow.com. Also, if you'd like to know more information on the FASB lease accounting changes uh, and the details about that, we have an article in the show. We'll have a link uh, here at the same website. And, and uh, we're going to take a short break. When we get back, I want to talk to you guys about some of the lease clauses and some of the terms in these leases that, that you're seeing because as you know, we make the single tenant and at least uh, investment market sound pretty sim simple, but the devil's in the details, right, in these leases. So there's a lot of things to, to watch out for. And, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, clauses that uh, are in there can really impact the value of these leases, can't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very know, much so. Yeah. So, so stay with us and we're going to get back and uh, talk about some of those clauses. We're also going to talk about some of the gotchas, right? Some of the <laughs> problems because again you know you can get your arms around single tenant net lease investing I think pretty easily and you can understand the the credit of the tenants the locations and these leases but sometimes there are some minute things in these leases that can cost some expenses and some kind of gotchas that that you weren't ready for and can impact value so if you are investing in single tenant net lease properties uh, use a broker who specializes in it every day. Make sure you use an attorney that does the same. So stay with us. We'll cover those gotchas and those lease terms when we get right back. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Stay with us. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, a great place to do business. Excelligent, information for the professionals. And Commercial Search, properties for sale and lease. To access these companies or for additional videos, podcasts, and articles, visit CREshow.com. <laughs> 